So apparently we get interrupted every two minutes and it takes us 20 minutes to recover at work. So that's an insane amount of productivity loss due to poor time management. So today we'll be discussing the best Microsoft tools for time management that can help you stay efficient and organized in 2025. Just very quickly before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime. We help organizations be more efficient, help make their employees' lives easier, happening to get more out of Microsoft 365. We've got free training linked in the description below, or if you already know you want to work together and want to know how we could work together, see if you're a good fit, then go straight to book a call using the link in the description below as well. So the common issues people face with time management at work is one, there's just too many things coming at you. So you might have WhatsApps, you might have Teams chats, you might have internal emails, you might have external emails, you might have Teams channel notifications, you might have notifications from other apps like planners emailing you or pinging you in Teams or to-dos doing the same, or there's just too much stuff going on. You might not know where a file's saved. It might be in SharePoint or OneDrive or in Teams or One Dropbox or Box or anywhere else that you might store it, someone's Google Drive. I've seen it all. I guess on top of all that chaos, people might have like just overwhelming workloads. So you've got way too many things coming at you. You've got no way to get through them all. You've got no way to prioritize them. You've got no way to record them all in one place. And so it's difficult to even know what you need to do, which might just lead to procrastination. It's like, well, I know I need to do this big thing. But actually, I'm just going to do those little things instead and not actually getting the most out of your day at work. So we'll have a look at some of the apps in Microsoft 365 that you've got access to already that can help you out with time management and so addressing some of the issues that we've just been through. So the obvious one, number one, is Microsoft To Do. That's your personal to-do list. You can drag things in there from your emails. You can assign a due date. You can have subtasks in there. Everything that you need to keep yourself organized on task should be in Microsoft To Do. Your inbox is a terrible place for you to manage your to-dos because it only contains everyone else's priorities on your time and nothing that you want to do. So unless you're gonna send yourself an email, which is its own problem, you need to be using a task manager. And if you're not using anything at all right now, then Microsoft To-Do is the one to go to. Don't worry about whether it's the best one or not. You've got access to it in Microsoft 365 at work and you can just start using it today. Next step is once you've got your tasks into Microsoft to do and out of Teams and out of email, ideally, then you need a time to go and do them. So most people's calendars, like their inbox, is only other people's asks of their time. So unless someone else puts a meeting in your calendar, there's nothing in it whatsoever. So most people's calendars look really, really free. And I say that's a bad thing. You should be putting your to-do tasks into your team's calendar so that you know when you're going to do those tasks. It's impossible to give someone an accurate estimated time of completing something. Someone jumps by your desk and says, hey, can you just do this task for me? When can you do it? And you're like, I don't know, could do it straight away. But then you don't know how everything else is shifting around. Or you could say, yeah, I'll get it to you by Friday. But it's probably just a guess. Unless you've put your tasks from your Microsoft to do into your calendar to say, well, here's when I'm going to do them. And your calendar should be pretty full, at least over the next one or two weeks with stuff that you already know that you need to do. If someone else wants your time, then you can schedule stuff around or bump them out into the third week and say, well, I'm free after three weeks. So just go and find a time in there. But unless you're converting your to do's to when am I going to do's, then you're never going to be able to manage your time. Calendar is the best thing that you can do to manage your time. And then we guess we come on to number three is if you're a manager or if any sort of collaborative work, which I guess is most people probably watching this video now, then you also might need other people to do stuff for you. Either you're delegating it or you're working with them and you just need to keep track of what everyone's doing. And Microsoft Planner is the go-to place to do that. It's like an open version of Microsoft To Do. It's very similar to Trello if you've ever used that before. And it's the go-to place that you can put group tasks there. You can see who's assigned to which task when it's due. You know that all the chasing for tasks is going to get done for you for other people. So if you assign someone a task, you know they're going to get notified when they've been assigned the task. And if you put a due date on, you know they're going to get chased up before the due date. So it takes all the excuses away of like, I didn't know I needed to do a task. 
how many times have you guys been in a meeting where you've got all the actions done, you send them out probably three days late, uh, and then turn up to the next meeting and no one's done them because they didn't know they needed to do them. Well, if you put them in Planner, they definitely won't have the excuse that they didn't know they needed to do them. They will be there. And Planner and To Do are ever closer coming together, although the implementation sometimes leave a, a bit to be desired, but any planner tasks that you've been assigned to will appear in your assigned to me bit of planner, but also in the assigned to me bit of to do. So whether you're working to do or in planner, you'll see all the things that you need to do right there across the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Couldn't really get a whole video on time management without going to number four, Copilot. If you're not using any AI, at all right now, then Copilot is the easiest thing to recommend inside the Microsoft 365 ecosystem because it's going to be secure and keep your organization's data safe, which some of the other ones might not do potentially. And even whether you get paid Copilot or not, and you can check out some of the videos I've got on Copilot, you can get most of the benefits of Copilot for free already. You don't need to worry about the return on investment or convincing your organization to get you a paid Copilot license. Just use free Copilot. If you're not using AI at all, it can massively increase the speed that you do stuff. So whether it's getting meeting transcripts and getting a summary, whether you've forgotten what you need to do out that meeting, you just chuck this transcript into Copilot and ask it, well, you know, what do I need to do based on this meeting? You can put multiple attachments in there and ask it to generate your report based on these three meetings we've had with a client and this uh, example report. You can get it to write stuff for you. You can get it to do slides for you in PowerPoint. You can get it to do graphs and things for you in Excel. It's worth having a look at. I'm not the best cheerleader for Microsoft Copilot because like I say, most of the things you can get for free or from other apps. Uh, and sometimes, to be honest, ChatGPT will give you a better answer than Copilot, even though it's using allegedly a very similar, if not the same model. However, if you're at work and you don't get to choose what tools you use, then Microsoft Copilot is going to be the best entry point into AI if you're not using AI at all to do your job right now. It can be a massive time saver. Lastly, I think number five, I've probably run out of tools, but Microsoft Teams. If you are not using Microsoft Teams to its full potential, then that is probably what's causing you the most amount of time management issues and you probably don't even realize it because you've never used Teams in the right way and seen it working where it can behave like a digital equivalent of an open plan office with everyone being able to do their work, be able to virtually talk across the desk, virtually overhear people in other bits of the office, speed up time to decision making because you can see and hear everything else that's going on. And Microsoft Teams channels is uniquely positioned to do that. It's just that most people have not set up their Teams environment properly with the minimum amount of Teams and the minimum amount of channels and the minimum, minimum amount of places to lose things, whether it's conversations, files, just not understanding OneDrive and SharePoint and Teams and how it can all be really, really simplified and act like the place that you do your work rather than another place to lose something. And if you haven't got that done yet, I would really, if you ever watched any other videos on this channel before, massive proponent of like simplify that first and everything else further down the line, even all the other apps we've talked about are easier or irrelevant if you get your team structure right first. So you don't need to worry about loads of different apps, of which tool do we use for project management or which thing do we use to do for, for this particular thing. Like if you've got your team sorted, every other decision will be easy or irrelevant. You don't need to worry about project management tools and tasks and things. If you're just working in Teams channels and everyone can see everything anyway, that will automatically be better. And then the other app, whichever you choose plan out or to do or whatever you choose, maybe it's a third party one, or maybe it's Microsoft Project, that will be easy or irrelevant because you can already see everything there. Everyone's already working there and you can just, it's just like working in a small group in an open plan office where you can see and hear everything going on anyway. So the need for like check-ins and other meetings kind of disappears. So if you need help doing that, then either book a call using the link in the description below or watch one of these videos next. Thanks for watching so far. See you in the next one.